How would your life change if you had supreme confidence right now in any area of life, be it your relationships, be it work, be it your business, be it public speaking, whatever it is, what would happen if you had supreme confidence? In today's episode, we will explore some of the myths about confidence building and how you can shift that so you can step into your greatest level of confidence. Before we get started, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button and make sure you share this video because once you've found out about some of the stuff I'm going to share with you, you'll be blown away because it will change your life should you put it into practice. Now today I'm in a different location, I'm snowed in at the time of recording, so you're going to hear a lot of traffic noise in the back. Hopefully it doesn't disturb you too much. So what is confidence? Confidence is a feeling, it's an internal sense of being, it's a state of consciousness. When you have that state of consciousness, you are able to do so much with your other life. What do you need confidence for? You may be somebody who wants to work out in the gym for the first time or pluck up the courage to do that first yoga session early in the morning. Maybe you want to go for that marathon that you've always dreamt of doing, cooking for your family or asking that beautiful potential soulmate onto a date. Maybe you need confidence at the workplace, the confidence to hold your own space during meetings, to ask for a rise. You can use confidence to build your wealth, to study at university as a young undergraduate or as a mature student. Write that book that's been sitting inside of you for years Sing that song that you've always wanted to sing. Speak in public for the first time. Go on that spiritual journey. Sail around the world in a yacht. Go skiing in the Alps. Join or create your own charity to help the homeless. What do you dream of being confident in? So why is confidence important? Confident makes you perform better in a particular skill set whether it be cooking, speaking a language, or enjoying the language of love. Confidence isn't just about being good at something, it gives you the impetus to do better. Confidence breeds more confidence in that area and by osmosis in other areas of life. The more confident you become, the better you become. The better you become, the better you feel about yourself and your capabilities. This gives you more confidence. Self-confidence increases your energy levels and moves your mindset from I can't to maybe I can or even I can. Children with high self-confidence perform better at school and later in life have higher job satisfaction. A 2015 study showed that underconfident students got worse than average grades and those who were overconfident also didn't do so well. The people in the middle ground with confidence did the best. There is a balance between low and high confidence. Confidence is not about being arrogant or cocky, but having self-awareness about one's weaknesses as well as one's strengths. Some studies show a strong relationship between confidence and positive mental health. However, back to balance again, one study showed that self-confidence has steadily increased for some people over the last 50 years and with it an increase in narcissism and a rise in unrealistic expectations. You may ask why confidence is attractive. Authentic confidence is essentially what makes a person more balanced. Thus, they are in a better position to manage the challenges and negotiations that life and relationships bring. A self-confident person is aware of their imperfections and they do not let them get in their way. A person who is self-confident has the aura of power and knowledge, gives the sign of a good leader. It encourages positive thinking and it shows how you feel about yourself. This makes you a magnet to people. Why is confidence important at the workplace? Confidence allows you to speak your truth. It means you speak concisely and with clarity. Such a person makes it easy for customers and colleagues alike to understand and, as importantly, be understood. 
Effective communication is critically important for career advancement or having long-term business success in any industry. Why is confidence important in leadership? If you wish to excel as a leader in any field, confidence plays a significant role. This will make sense when you discover the four steps I share with you on how to develop supreme confidence. Self-confidence is necessary for leaders to take risks and accomplish high goals. Leadership involves influencing others and self-confidence allows the leader to feel assured that his or her attempts to influence are appropriate and right. Self-confidence requires a positive self-image. Have you heard this saying? Good leaders make decisions quickly and they change their minds slowly. Decision-making takes confidence. Most of them missed the point. You know how some people seem to be mood hoovers a lot? Okay, mood hoovers all the time. Their negative mindset is a way of being. Confidence is also a way of being, a mindset, an attitude. There are a bunch of myths about confidence that don't deserve too much attention, but I'll briefly mention them anyway. Number one, you have to be an extrovert to be confident. Number two, confident people do not have any insecurities. Number three, you were born confident. Number four, confident people are confident all the time. Number five, you have to be arrogant to be confident. Number six, confident people are big risk takers. None of these six are true. But here's the one that really is the biggest myth of the lot. You need confidence before you get started. This is absolutely incorrect. So you need to have confidence before you ask that beautiful, amazing person out on a date. Or maybe you need confidence to enter a competition. Maybe confidence to start a new job. Well, how can that work? It's a bit like saying, Oh, I need confidence before I can start swimming. No, confidence is an outcome. So the number one myth is confidence is not the precursor to stuff. The stuff is a precursor to confidence. So let me share with you four steps in building your confidence and I'll go in reverse order. Take whatever you want to be confident in. Imagine your confidence or what would that be for you? Write down in the comments what confidence looks like for you. What specifically would you like to be confident in? Step one, imagine you've got all the confidence in the world in that particular area. What would it look like? What would it feel like? What would it sound like to you? Imagine a picture of you being confident and living as if you already had the confidence. That's your outcome. That's your end results. That's your intention. That's your goal. Let's take a step back. Before you're confident, what have you got? You've got a capability of doing something. So for example, part of my background is martial arts. I was a British champion. Before I became the British champion, I had to practice. So I see myself practicing the techniques. So a very important element of becoming confident is practice, is developing your capability. In other words, the ability to carry out whatever it is that you have confidence in. I didn't just turn up to my first Kung Fu and kickboxing lesson and have confidence. No, in fact, I was super, super nervous. So confidence is an outcome, but before confidence comes capability. Before capability develops, you need to take the first step. And here's the missing link that we very often forget. In order to take that first step, you need courage. And where does courage come from? It comes from internal. It's a heart-based thing. You have this burning desire to take action or be successful in something. Well, take that first step because I promise you, out of all the thousands of steps you're going to do, the first step is the one that's the hardest. And a lot of people are too focused on what they want to get that they forget that. Just take the first step. Once you've taken that first step, then the second step is easier and the next step is easier. But don't get me wrong. As a martial artist, it doesn't mean that I can just turn up to a lesson or a training session and be super confident each time. No, I am nervous. Of course I am. I also do yoga when I have my one-to-one -one sessions. I am nervous to start off with. Showing up, turning up, taking that first step is the most important steps before you achieve confidence. Let's take one step back. What comes before courage? It is commitment. How committed are you 
to achieving confidence in whatever it is that you're hoping to achieve confidence in. If you haven't got enough reasons to do it, then you'll find plenty of excuses not to do it. For example, if you're looking to lose weight, you're looking to become muscular, go to the gym and become like Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you're not committed to it, you're going to suffer pain, physical, emotional pain, and that will be a good reason for you to walk away from it all. So in order to commit yourself, here's what I recommend. Write a hundred reasons why you deserve to be confident and successful in that area. So if you're looking to have an amazing soulmate relationship, what are the reasons? The reasons aren't just, oh, because somebody else can love me. No, make a list of all the things you can do very specifically. You might say, for example, I might say, I want to take out my beloved or my soulmate out for dinner in Venice, or I want to take her, her to an Indian restaurant in Mumbai, even though I live in the UK. So write down very specific reasons why you deserve, why you choose to be confident in that area. But before you commit to anything, you need total clarity. How clear are you about what it is that you want to be confident in? If you can't see where you're going, how will you know when you got there? Without the vision, you have nothing. So step one, have clarity of vision. Step two, commit to that vision. Step three, take that first step and do it again and do it again. That means pluck up the courage. And if you haven't got the courage, Get people to support you, mentor, friends, people who believe in you, who will support you to take that next, next step. Step four, develop capability. In time, you will have confidence. There's this wonderful saying, which is that how someone does one thing with excellence is how they do everything with excellence. So find one area of your life that you'd like to develop a new set of confidence in develop it and then use it in other areas of life. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe and make sure you share this video. And I will see you next time on the Energy Healing Podcast. Mm -hmm.